Okay, as you can see by the title, Sorority House Massacre. This came out in the mid 80s, and it's about as generic 80s slasher as it gets. But that was the whole goal of it, obviously, because it was in that era of the Slumber Party Massacre and those generic Selim slasher horror titles, along with House on Sorority Row. You basically combine that with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Slumber Party Massacre. Um, so, so I've been wanting to see this, and then you can check them all out on YouTube. There's, it's like a three-part trilogy, and then I think they did two more that were named like Cheerleader Massacre or something. But I'm gonna review them one at a time as I see them. So I just checked out the first one, and uh, it came off as a knockoff Halloween. Makes the initiation, final exam, and final exam itself is a knockoff of Halloween. If you've ever seen that movie, don't really recommend it. It sucks ass too, and obviously it's a combination of House on Sorority Row with that concept of the Slumber Party Massacre involved. So we follow we follow a girl that's already traumatized. That's how they play it out, and um, she moves, she's like a freshman, she moves in, she's already a freshman, and she moves into her sorority, and she's traumatized, just like the initiation, exactly like that. Um, so you know you're in for a whole bunch of emotional filler right off the bat, and that's how it plays out, and we learn that the sorority house has a history of, um horror that there was a murder that occurred there and she's having nightmares of how her family was murdered um so the the guy doesn't even show up and he breaks out and it ends up being her brother it's not that big of a twist everyone knows it going in that's the synopsis of it is she has memory loss and her brother breaks out of the institute they have a telekinetic connection that he knows her presence is back in the house so he busts up the mental institution and he heads to the house and these characters are just so dumb but I mean it's sorority house massacre what the hell do you expect um they're not even that hot look at this poster most 80s slasher posters 80s horror posters were all artistically drawn you know and uh, this one, they hired some blonde bitch who's hot, hotter than any of the bitches that we got to see in the actual movie. And uh, they put a bunch of ordinary girls in the movie. And another dumb thing that they do, the whole ending kind of feels staged. But what they do is, it feels real dark. And I like the feel of it as it goes on. I buy into the what's going on and the chaos because he shows up at the sorority house. There's only four bitches and like a few guys who are trying to get some. And the kills feel realistic how he stabs them. They're not over the top. So it feels like it all really happened and that's how a murder would happen. He like cuts the phone line. And they're all huddled up like in a room with the dresser and he's trying to encroach on the room it's it's pretty classic it builds up the tension it's worth the first the movie's only 75 minutes long so it's worth that kind of the wait out because the payoff's pretty good even though it's not a whodunit i like whodunits more um the house on sorority row is a whodunit and um but this one you know who the killer is because you see him that other side of the world of him breaking out of the mental institution. A la Michael Myers. So, the bitches are all in the room, and the guy's climbing up on the outside of the house, up to the second story window, and they knock him off the ledge. And what do they ask themselves? They're like, is he dead? Even though this came out in 1986. A point in time where the, you'd think that the characters would have the knowledge to break the fourth wall and mention um, he's an 80s slasher villain, he's not dead. Especially not from being pushed out the window. 
and fallen on the grass. And then they walk past some bitch who's like was stabbed by a earlier and she's got blood everywhere. And uh, then they ask if she's dead. Yeah, she's dead. You guys should know these things by now. And so I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a C, 7.5 out of 10. Um, I'm looking forward to the second one. Apparently, some bitches buy up the house for their sorority house to reopen it, and they hold a seance. They play with an Ouija board, and that's as far as I read. I don't want to know any more else. I'm going to check it out soon. So, um, check out the sorority house massacre, and I also want to see... Haunting on Sorority Row. I think that's the Leighton Meester. That was a Lifetime made for TV movie. That came out in like 2007, 2008. They have that on YouTube. I gotta check it out. I'm gonna watch all the Sorority House massacres coming up this fall. The review. I've been wanting to check them out for a long time. So this was JBM and I'm out. Tell me your thoughts. Leave comments and uh, tell me what you think about this franchise.